Welcome back to the OPL. We just saw Legacy absolutely crush Tectonic. It wasn't a quick victory. A very slow. It crush. wasn't a pretty victory, but they just put them to the grindstone. Mm -hmm. They made them work for every single thing on the map. And in the end, they just, I mean, there was nothing Tectonic could really do. I saw the damage charts uh, in that break there. And I don't know, Jana did almost as much damage as the Siva and the Vega there. So that's looking grim for the lineup of Tectonic. See if they can change things up for game two. So how do you mentally reset, right? Mm -hmm. You were one of the most vocal members of the Chiefs lineup, you were very vocal on Legacy as well, famously the Ideas Man mm -hmm. was dubbed. So you've just, I mean, give it to me. Obviously it hasn't happened much in your very, very, very impressive career, Bryce, but <laughs> okay, when you get dropped game one, what do you like? What do you go back? And zero, say? zero, you go back, you just reset. It's hard to say specifically because it's based on person to person. I react very differently to getting hard stomped than someone like Swiffer does, you know what I mean? Like he's, a, he's very quiet or whatever, and I go back into the room, I'm like, I'm never playing Karma ever again. And that's my reaction, and I don't know if tilting works like that or low, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's very different. Uh, so, But do you care about your own play? Or like, for example, this game, tilting, as mm -hmm. we jump back out of Champions League, he could have played anything. Mm -hmm. Really? You put him on Alistar, game probably doesn't go much different. You put yeah. him on Jana, Karma, you chain him with the Viger, Viger mm -hmm. into the mid lane, and mm -hmm. you know, I, literally the guy, so what... Do you just try and swap it? Is it like, let's do the exact opposite? Because uh, that obviously I, I, didn't work. I don't work. think so. You don't want to come into a series and lose the first game and be like, hey, okay, all of our plans are out the window. We're just yep. going to just gonna make something up and roll with it. You know what I mean? Like, you don't want to change everything. You want to, you want to, as a team, go back and be like, what was the biggest problem that game? Like, okay, we had the gangplank or whatever, but like, we just couldn't do anything. We didn't have the engage tools. Jarvan wasn't enough. We needed to, we need to do something else. So they, you attack it that way. You break it down bit by bit and decide what is the most uh, important part of that game that was a problem and you need to fix that. Yeah, because that game to me, I mean, it was just a slow inevitability as mm -hmm. we keep saying. So I agree with you, but when your problem is like, we kind of just were fine and then, and then lost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Look at the Barons, maybe. Mm. Uh, look at how they set up for team fight. But really, the problem was the no proactive play. And that's the thing, right? That's very hard to attack in between a game. You can't be like, oh, wow, Vega was awful. Let's just ban it, right? Yeah. They were like, okay. Because it wasn't. Our communication wasn't good. Like, we didn't, we didn't pull the trigger. We weren't decisive enough. And that's why we lost the game. You know what I mean? Like, that's not something you can fix in the span of 12 minutes between games. You can't be like, hey, you, can you just talk more than you've ever talked before in a game? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that, it doesn't it doesn't work that way, which is makes it very difficult for Tectonic coming into game two here to switch it up. Yeah, and one thing I always like to do as a coach, if I had a game where I felt like my team wasn't talking enough, enough is whoever is the shot caller, whoever, because there's not one shot caller. That's a bad way to say it. Whoever is the most vocal member gets the engage tool the next game. <laughs> if it's your AD carry, they are now playing Ash. If it's your support, he's playing Mal uh, like Mal Al Alistar. You played Malachi. I did play Malachi. <laughs> he's playing Alistar. If he's a top laner, he's playing Malachi. Mid lane, like just give him something that has a go button. Because yeah. then what it teaches your team is like, when that person says go, they actually can go. Yeah. Whereas it's like, it's not a go, are you sure? It's very frustrating being someone that wants to go and you not having that productivity. Yeah. It, for example, if Tilting is the shot caller on this team and he's yeah. like, we're going to go, like, Jada Tornado Flash yeah, is only so good as an engaged tool. I mean, he tried it once. He hit him with a Flash Monsoon, yeah. but uh, just didn't work here. As we are into champ select and they do just first pick the gang plank. Well, the gang plank wasn't the problem. It to was be not. Gang plank did a lot of damage. He saved a lot of turrets. Callista, nah, Rise taken away. Azir, as well as the Alawi mm -hmm. and the Cogmore. So potentially, we're going to see Shock pick up an Urgot if we are to believe Lucio Soulstrike. Braun picked up on the side of Legacy. Potentially here. Orn still available, but because Legacy did pick up that Braun, and uh, unless you see Tilting playing into the bot lane, they've already got that Gang Plank, so won't be putting that one top. And this is potentially the last game of the day, and we've seen every single game so far have that Cogmore and Callista Bands. Those AD carries nobody wants to play or play against. And this is fascinating. In the space of one week, Orn has gone from the highest priority champion in the game mm -hmm. to zero priority, and now back to first round. Mm -hmm. There is just such a conflicting opinion on I mean, the demigod of the top lane. It's kind of team by team though, right? You can't get the OPL's opinion on Orn. But really, like generally, when you look at regions, that's exactly what you get. You will mm -hmm. see regional trends, and Os is definitely not falling into that habit. Yeah, but the point of the point of that is that they are trends, and not every team has to follow the trend, right? So obviously, here Tectonic much favour 
a lot of favor towards that gangplank instead of the Orn, whereas yep. Legacy are like, okay, we're going to fir first rotation that guy. They also, this draft lends itself to that because he wasn't banned and Tectonic didn't first pick. They can take the Braum and the Orn in the same rotation, so potentially if Braum was first picked by Tectonic, they're like, hey, we don't actually we don't actually care about Orn that much this time. Yeah, for sure, and we see the damage threats for Tectonic picked up first. It's going to be Cassiopeia and Ezreal. If this is any other team, for example, if we flip this draft, I'm like, Damn, Legacy got a real, real good composition. Mm -hmm. But the lack of go buttons is still very apparent. And we see right now that Jarvan will be picked up for Legacy. So Orn, Jarvan, fantastic engage tools. You layer it with a Braum. They certainly have ways to start and stop fights. Mm -hmm. They do ban the Karma again. Do you expect to see that last ban coming out from Legacy to be the Sejuani, to be honest, coming through against Wave? Yep. Take him off that proactivity, put him on something squishing. And then if you're looking at this column, Tectonic, Tilting, not a big tank player, so he might go towards the Jaina again. You could be looking against a five squishy composition. Path rise on that gangplank in the top lane, not very tanky. Yeah, which just doesn't leave you with much room for execution errors. If your order at the start of this week, mm -hmm. and I'm using them because they are the most guilty of this, okay. they said that we might muck up one engage. We might muck up two engages, but if we have, but if we have five engages, <laughs> yeah. we're not going to muck them all up. Whereas right now, if you're swathe or tilting, and you're going to have a one. solo engage, you have one against the team that has Braum and Orn, which are very good at successfully disengaging yeah. team fights. Well, that's what I was going to say. The Braum coming through as well could potentially block it. Orn, you say as well. Well, Ram is just. Such, I know that it's a good going forward tool, but yeah. it's a. Big slow. Mm -hmm. If they start running at you when you just sound the horn, that dude makes it so you don't go very far. And the Siva ban, interestingly, coming out from Tectonic. So here. obviously don't like playing Siva. They like playing it into Ezreal and mm -hmm. don't like playing Ezreal into Siva because the yep. shove is a real issue. Yep, absolutely is Tectonic. On that Ezreal won't have much ability to push the bot lane. He has those cues, but no AOE to his name as the Malzahar does come through for Claire. Was on the Azir last game. I think his best performances this year. We've only seen two sets so far, but they have been on the Azir. He was topping the damage charts last game, 100% there for Legacy. So. I'm so excited about Claire this week. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've, I've talked him up for so long. I've talked him up before he was in the OPL. He was playing on the Legacy Genesis side with Impaired, and I was still talking about him. And I just feel like this is the year that Claire finally shows his final four. Ooh, do it. They're not going to do it, but do it. Yeah, where, what, Jungle Brand? Yeah, do it. Sona. We've already got a Shen in the bottom lane, mm -hmm. so we are 100% looking for a jungler right now for Sway. It's not a jungle. Ivan. Oh, that'd be a fun one. Gragas does give them the engage tools, as does Zach. They already have the follow up with Shen, so pretty nice combination to round out Tectonic's composition here. Shen layering that over with the Blob Man, zooming into the back line there. 80 carry, yet to be picked up by Legacy. They do have a lot of options, only three of them banned so far, so the likes of Tristana, Caitlyn. Yep, all available. See what they go Vane, with here. Twitch. All of those things available Have right now. Have we seen a Twitch game yet? I think we did. Fantix played Twitch and he was submarining into the back line. Yep. Correct. They played Twitch and Cogmore week one as they are potentially opting in for the vein. Renowned counter pick for the Ezreal gets you through that early lane phase. Yep. And he obviously wants to build the tier and vein very weak early. So very good that chasing. Uh, and especially when you have a Braum on your team, that's never a bad thing. Mm hmm. When you look at Tectonic's engage, you do have that Zac very hard to get onto the vein because obviously as soon as you cast that slingshot, you are committed to the location and Vayne can redirect herself with that ulti stealth coming through and get to a position where Zac One thing I will, will say find is Zac got a lot easier to execute when you could just cure minion and then flash slap a vein. Mm -hmm. I agree with you, but that is like the mistake that a lot of solo queue players yeah. make is trying to queue the champion. Yep. Stop queuing champions. They move. Minions are stationary. <laughs> Cue the minion, flash auto attack the champion, and it has the exact same impact. Make it easier. Make it 100% easier here. We'll see if Sway does do that one in this game here as uh, we're looking at Legacy's bot lane. Good performance last game out of those two. Yeah, Raid Very stable. impressive. Mm -hmm. They just haven't kind of made a mistake. Raid and Raze thing. for me in 2015, end of the year, were on a similar trajectory. Now, obviously, Raze has taken off and become a household name with mm -hmm. the Chiefs. Raid, I would say, had a faltering year. And uh, maybe it was 2016 I'm talking about. 2016 they were both taking off. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would say that this year with Legacy is potentially the time that he can re-cement himself as one of the top tier 80 characters. Changed up his support here with the likes of Decoy. Obviously was on Abyss last season with Rosie. Yep. Very, two very different players. Decoy favors the tanks. Big Braum player. We've seen a lot of that from him this split so far. And Rosie, very, uh, what is very Rosie interesting. Zyra, Bard, things like that. Just 
complete opposite, I think, for the most part. Okay. With a bit of Nautilus thrown in there. That's his tank of choice. Certainly is, as we see Tectonic and Legacy stream onto Summoner's Rift for game number two. Legacy one up at the moment. As we're going to check in with Tectonic's coach right now, it's going to be Laura and Johnny. Thanks, guys. I'm standing here with Cyclone. Now, the casters are big fans of Shock. They rate him. Are we going to keep seeing him on these S-tier champions where he can carry? Uh, he has worked really hard on his champion pool over the break. You know, last year there were all the concerns. He played three champions, um, and he's put a lot of effort in over the offseason. So I think we're seeing pretty quickly that that's paid off. Well, last week we did see that Urgot pick. Can we expect to see more of these fun champions popping up throughout the split? Um, well, I think what you'll see is... We pick for whatever we think the best is in the situation. Often we have a, we have a plan to try and push them towards something that we have a counter pick that's maybe a little bit unusual. People like variety, but we just see it as we can put people in a, our opponents in a situation they're unfamiliar with and uncomfortable, and they're less likely to play confidently. And when you're against uh, teams that have strong comfort players, that's a pretty big advantage. Well, what does Tectonic have to do this game to turn the series around and make a comeback? So Legacy uh, like to play for like slow, methodical type games, and we saw that last game. We went for really greedy, and we're going for greedy again because we think that that kind of plays into how they like to play the game, and they're basically playing the same thing. So it's just who can stall harder and do lots of damage at the end. Well, good luck with the game, and thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you. All right, so stall and team flight at the end of the game. I think the critical thing that they missed it's last the game fight. is the team fight at the end. <laughs> As we actually see Poison Land, Shock streaming forward, gets one E down. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Going to be chugging both the pots to get himself back up to full after that one, but nice trade coming out of the level two Cassiopeia. Yeah, and Cassio is such a dangerous champion at this mm -hmm. stage of the game. She has the best chase because she gets the movement speed, and uh, Poison plus E's are very spammable. And it's interesting to see Old mate Johnny Cyclone just confirming what we thought there. With the greedy play, they do just first pick the gangplank, and that plays into that playstyle perfectly there. Yep. They think Ceres can't be able to punish that one in conjunction with Sybil on the top side of the map, so they first pick that one away already. And Sybil actually going to get access to the jungle here because even though his mid lane's being pushed in, uh, his top lane is currently having the shove. He will posture. A little bit around the uh, And he's gone here. the Sybil long way around. Towards. You can see mid lane has reversed off the turret. Oy. So Sybil potentially going to find space. Oh, short. short. Hands that. But Orn is coming. <laughs> and you can see that Swaith has to jump underneath the turret. Potentially oh. will get blobbed. He does for his summoner spell. And uh, very nicely played. And that's the flash with the ignite coming out from Ceres. That was the spell book that got him that kill. Obviously, Zach with the revive passive does not go down completely. But they burn that one. But really, and it's about really helped him out. what it got there for Sybil. So he's now got complete control of topside jungle. Zach, no passive, means that he can't take a greedy fight, then hope yep. a TP saves his life or something along those lines. So you can see Swaith is actually just going to recall, and Sybil's got a two camp advantage now. Yeah, because he knows it's warded. He knows Sybil can punish him if he commits to that buff once again. But uh, this two. is a real problem. He can flash. He's going to. Ooh, both Ooh. flash used, but he'll also burn on the side of Claire. That's a big deal coming out of the Cassio. He burns both summoners out of clay, has to flush and heal away to live by the skin of his teeth. Not able to TP back, so does Shock have enough mana to be able to push this wave in before yeah, Clay gets sure. back? But uh, I think that Shock right there has shown that uh, he is a serious threat in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. Claire, very impressive game one, but already being bullied around. It is, as I said, this is a hard matchup for Melzahar. I actually rate this as one of the better counter picks to Melzahar in the current meta. Mm -hmm. uh, and without double summoner su spells and the fact that Gangplank, not Gangplank, Zach is not reliant on his ultimate to gank at all. Double CC in his kit. We should expect a visit quite soon. Mm -hmm. Coming up with no summoners there. We have not checked in with the bot lane yet this game, but it all looks fairly stable right now. About a 4 CS difference between the two. Great Radiant Depot just farming up. About Pap Rise going away from the bottom lane because mm -hmm. he's a player that we eagerly are tracking. Had an okay game one? Did he have a good game one? What did you make of that? Game one last game? Yeah. I think very good. I think in terms of productivity for the gameplay himself, he doesn't have a whole lot. He requires setup from the team. He was applying a lot of pressure in the sidelines. He was taking down turrets where uh, he could sit in that 1v1. And I think 
Coming into game two here, he's in the exact same matchup there. Orn versus Gangplank, and he was bullying around Siri. Siri's coming in for all legacy, just a two-week sub, but Paprise was doing work. And I think even in week one against Tally, he was that Alawi into Gangplank at one stage. He was bullying around Tally, and he's kind of fallen into that trap where he's getting these advantages in the side lanes, but just not able to convert it, so... And you can see right now, they're Oi. getting them. Oh, actually a really nice taunt down there, but he uses a dodge zone at where he sword was, which was unfortunately right next to low. And we see actually a bit of a 2v2 here. Swaith is caught up in levels, is now level five. Didn't see how he managed to do that when he's three camps down, and Claire one more time is absolutely oom. Um. Paparaz oh. in the top lane, actually in trouble. Flame Breath out there, Flash has to be burnt. So Paparaza, man, will just compliment and gets bullied out of lane. And normally, in these matchups with the Orn, when they do take Ignite, they take it so that they can early have that advantage, so that you don't want to get all in, so you can farm up and then TP back to lane. But Series already twice this game has gotten so much value out of that. Someone are actually using it offensively instead of defensively here. Yeah, for sure. And Swaith actually looks like he's going to take a blue buff at six minutes in. You see Paparaz actually teleported Ooh. back to lane. Dosi do gets around the flag <laughs> drag. No summoners there, but they don't want to pull the trigger on that engage. No Cataclysm, obviously, out of the Jarvan. Series did have ulti, but just a bit too far away there. They don't want to commit to that. So this first blue buff that will go over to a Cassiopeia is going to be so delayed, mm -hmm. Agent. I'm not sure that is the correct call in the current landscape of the game because mm -hmm. uh, Shock is actually doing a very good job against Claire right now. Yep. And Claire's just going to get the get out of jail free card yeah. of the blue buff right now. Whilst it doesn't mean anything right now until he gets that blue. Once he does, Claire will just be able to spam his abilities on the wave, keep the Cassiopeia at bay, keep her away, potentially look for picks in the side lane. We do mention that uh, they have a lot of CC on the lineup of Legacy with that Malzulti of Braum in the bot lane, on in the top lane, so many tools for gank setup. He gets a, gets a free pass to run around with the Jarvan. They could wreak havoc on the Tectonic lineup. For sure. I want to talk about one thing really briefly, which is the fact that Cassiopeia doesn't get punished for QSS as much as other champions do. Which is a really strange thing to say. But because she doesn't have to buy Boots, because Boots is built into her passive. Yep. She actually can go for it. As we oh. see, a big engage mid lane. And they're actually going to use three ultimates right now. But that? the turnaround is oh. there. And it looked like for some reason the ram didn't go off. Because Claire going to be kidnapped, taken back into the team. We'll have to use heal. And Ceres, where was the ram? Is Swaith going to commit to this kill? No, we're looking for Claire. Wanted to Eon to him once again, but oh, Ceres, I think the thought process, he looks at the mid lane, they can't see Zach quite yet, and he's like, okay, that guy's dead. I don't need to cast this one, so he doesn't. The Ram just runs up the river and doesn't come running back down. Shock lands the Cassio ult, he stuns two members up, and instead of that gank looking very successfully for Legacy, it's actually the turnaround. Yeah, exactly right. And I mean, now Swaith, who was getting bullied around a little bit as we take another look at it, Agent. Yeah, we do see him. We're looking at Ceres, he tries, he misses, he pulls it early. That's unforgivable, honestly. That is. That you is have like, to be able to hit that one. That's an easy skill. That is like a professional tennis player throwing the ball in the air and missing a serve. <laughs> <laughs> that is the equivalent <laughs> for sports like fan out there. That's uh, As we see, Decoy again going very low in the bottom lane. Yeah. Tilting as well as low. Kind of having their way right now in the bottom lane. His Shen's looking good. Last weekend, his really bad performance was on the Karma. Then second game looked decent on the Shen. Didn't find the win there, but looked all right. And this game, again, getting those taunts constantly onto Decoy. He got one on before onto Raid, so they are slowly, we'll ever so slowly, winning this bot lane, I believe. Potentially will get the reset here. And we can see straight away uses that ultimate, looking to clear out the wave. It's very difficult at times to get resets on Ezreal lanes just because of that lack of... AOE, and you can see they're trying to bring multiple members down here to stop it, but that's a very nice reset. Mm -hmm. Vayne on the opposite side of the hand, though, does not have a lot of wave clear herself. So in terms of matchups, one of the easier ones, and with Decoy going back to base, they do just spam their abilities, ulti that wave, get the shove in, look for a reset here, does pick up his team tier straight into Mana Mute. Nope, he decides against it, probably opting in for the Sheen. Yeah, I think tier Sheen is the yep. best. You need some cooldown reduction. I also just think Iceborne Gauntlet. Fixes so many of your shoving problems that you probably shouldn't rush Man Immune when you've got a Gangplank and a Cassiope you're on. You're not there for the early game damage as Ezreal in this comp, which is what the AD gives you. You're there for the late game damage, which means you need a little bit earlier transformation and some control over your lane. And I do just want to take a look at the goal right now. We have about a 1.2k gold lead and 600 of it. It's not too much, but it's on the Gangplank. The game is fairly even. Only one killer going over to Zach, but... 
already. 0-0-0 zero, 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 down 10 CS, but has 600 gold over his opponent. How do you feel about that one, Jake? Yeah, Ooh. feel great. As we see Claire use the stopwatch. Will dodge out on the Cassiopeia ult. However, drag back. Will fall down. This again goes over to Sway. Meanwhile, top lane, they actually pick up the kill onto that gank plank we were talking about. So yeah. maybe agreeing with us that it needs to go punished. Mm -hmm. We don't see exactly what happens. I guess we'll get a replay shortly. But Claire finds himself underneath a Zac. Yeah, and right Ooh. now, that's a very nice Shen ultimate onto Low to stop the aggression there. Mm -hmm. Potentially could have been the answer to the top lane play, but obviously Paparaz just died too early. Yep, unfortunately not there for Tectonic. He does go down, but does base, pick up his, uh, his Triforce there. Gonna Ooh. be chilling, getting back to lane. Very nice Q going out there, and you saw so much damage. You see Paparaz in the top lane. See this one again. Sybil in the pink watered bush, so he has no idea he's there. Just doesn't need a flag and drag. Hits him with the Cataclysm there. Paparaz obviously has no flash, so... Oh, he did, actually. Just chooses not to use it. I actually think that's wise choice. Because uh, he, he was, was already dead. Ignit. Yep. He was 100% dead there. As you mentioned, had the Ignite. Is that the right term? Ignit? I have no idea. <laughs> I just like that saying it. <laughs> that doesn't sound very nice. Hey. But I mean, I'll back it. I'll back it. Yeah, after just, like, insulting oh, it. Oh, this is very them. Oh, Heel so burnt. close. Yeah, that was actually a very nice play from Ray. Uh, very close. Very close to getting this done there. Could have followed up. You see Sybil in the river right now. If they did pick that one up, Gank potentially. Gank ultimate not available. Mm -hmm. So they're still looking for this gank. Both jungle is down here. Braum ultimate is up. Vayne ultimate is not up. They're trying to bait this, it looks like it. But I don't think Legacy want anything yeah, to Legacy. do with it. Legacy. Sybil backs off, so their bot lane doesn't buy into that trade there. They do have the TP on the likes of Pabu. Sorry, Pabu, he's on the he's on the couch over there. Pat yeah. Rise. Series didn't have his, so it could have been a 4v3 if they did pull the trigger on that engage, but... Is Legacy the most disciplined team in the OPL? What do you mean by discipline? Like, as in, I feel if you hit that Braum Q on any other team, they probably would look to take the fight because they had a summoner spell advantage. Mm -hmm. No heal available. Yep. Legacy, they say, eh, something's going on here. We're still think, scaling. Doesn't really matter. I don't think you can say that. I think you'd have to give it to Diables right now. Okay. I think overall, in terms of the the opponents they versed in the Chiefs' first game of the split, they uh, were very disciplined, and then we saw them today. But isn't down it sick. easy to be disciplined against good teams? Uh, Here's a conundrum question for you. Okay. Would well then, you not say, hey, this is low and tilting? Like, we can take this? I mean, if you're FBI and Rogue, sure. Okay. Just but, a bit uh, of shade <laughs> thrown at the order bottom line, all right? <laughs> Wonder why Five members down here at the bottom line. We'll talk about it later, Bryce. We can have words with each other. Dodge zone comes down. Ram comes out. Double knock-up. Bouncy castle accomplished. That's a nice three-man taunt, but you're still going to die. And a very clean execution of the turret die. And a five-man commit for Legacy. What can Tectonic do on the other side of the map? Tectonic Swathe is down the bot side, so he can't do a whole lot of anything. Legacy... Not opting in for the turret here, potentially. Sybil staying around with Raid. Is it enough? That's full HP. Yeah, it certainly looks to be the case. However, mid lane going to fall very low. Paparize cannot be underestimated in how quickly he also takes the turret. And here's the race between the bot side turret and the mid lane. Very low. 25% here. Top lane as well. It could be the two for one, but who gets first brick? I think it's going to be the bot side with yeah, Vayne. Yeah, I think it's going to be Legacy with Vayne. Ooh, However, yep. they split the gold. Yep. And I would argue at this stage of the game, getting two for one is better off. And getting solo gold onto Gangplank is an absolutely massive yep. deal. Legacy do need to win the race there, so they do hold Sybil around there. As you said, don't split the gold because they wanted to get first brick. Would have been even worse if they uh, didn't split the gold and then didn't even get first brick as well. Yeah, completely agree with that one. And not great tempo accomplished, honestly, off the back end of that Legacy trade. You can yep. see they're trying to stop Pathfarizer's uh, reset. So, I mean, now it is better. And I mean, you have a gold lead for Tech One now. Mind you, it's very small. Just a bit, just under 2k here. I mean, at 14 minutes in, that's not a small gold mm -hmm. lead. That's actually a fairly good gold lead. How much can we attribute to Gangplank? Ah, uh, we'll see. Let's have a look. 9,000. There we go. Yeah. Pat Bryce. Doing work up there in the top lane right now. Swaith is sitting pretty. He's got 2-0-0 zero, zero right now. Only about two camps behind his... Uh, Nemesis and Sybil here. They're looking for something mid. Yeah, they're actually two. looking to get it as well. That is going to be oh. Sybil getting stunned up. So there's Taunt no lands. return damage. Ooh. Taunt lands, as you said, and now they're going to chase him down. See whether anything else can come out here. Has to burn the flash. So Sybil falls down. No summoner spells. Sorry, Claire falls down. Sybil, mm -hmm. no summoner spells. And this is the uh, shock mid lane really putting in some overtime. Yeah, 100% here. They do get the one kill and two flashes out of Claire and Sybil. And it's just net them the... Uh, control of the mid lane, but the bot lanes are rotating here. Raid onto Tilting. 
Yeah, see whether they can get the anything. Orn. Orn comes out. This time he hits it back, and they're going to go aggressively oh, onto Shock. No flash available, and he will get picked up. They're now looking for tilting right underneath the oh, turret. Nice. Really nice stopwatch actually coming across, and now Sybil in some trouble falls down to Paprise. And that is without Ezreal taking any part in that team fight. Low can't find his way in there, tilting very nice stopwatch to keep himself alive on the back end of that fight, but Tectonic just stay around a little bit too long in that mid lane there. Shock does fall down, but they do pick up Sybil. Yeah, one for one trade mm -hmm. at this stage of the game. Certainly not a bad thing, especially when you trade a kill onto Gangplank. Yep. See, now it sounds like I like Gangplank. I hate Gangplank, <laughs> but he's just getting more fed. Yeah, but I mean, if you look at the compositions, right, if you're trading kills at this stage for Tectonic, I think it's a good sign. You have that Gangplank scaling, Cassio, Ezreal, yep. all these abilities, side lane control uh, will be very good for them with that Shen on the support pick there. So I feel like it is a good situation for them right here. They're trading the Rift Herald for the Dragon. And I feel like what you were trying to say before, in your own little way, was that it's personality based, whether you play, you know, your game of League of Legends or the opponent. Is that what you're going for? Or you just... You think I was just flaming the order bottom Yeah, line. just flaming the order no, bottom just bottom open line. flame. Just, yeah. Open flame? Yeah. Yeah, I see. All right. In that case, I seem to remember a certain series where you got hooked by a rogue at FBI and died at level two. Yeah, but I was playing and Lulu, then, so arguably, <laughs> missed Rift Rivals for your squad, so... Oh! Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, I still attended. Maybe not internationally, but I attended on this desk right here, so he was just starting the casting career a couple of months early. <laughs> oh, that was rough. Come on, man. You can't do me like that. File, In file public file. as well, on stream. Oh. <laughs> You're rude. I mean, I guess I started it. Come on. That's all right. Let's get back into this game as we watch Sybil <laughs> I can't, I'm take laughing. a few cams right you, you now. He's just, uh, a bit. Yeah, he's just, he's just farming away. Shock and uh, Claire have access to their ultimates right now, and there's a bit of a fight brewing in the mid lane. Swaith was looking, but the bot lane of Legacy does arrive early, so yeah. they don't opt into anything. With no summoner spells available on Shock, and he is right now the strongest current member, even though he doesn't have the most gold. You can mm -hmm. see that they just want to fight around that mid lane and see if they can keep him down a little bit more, especially given the fact that Claire's flash ulti, the floaty, is available. Mm -hmm. And this is the classic Legacy strat from about a year ago. Brisbane Finals. Big Brain Lucio was saying we're going to pick Lucian Braum, push in bot lane, walk mid, push in mid lane, and then rotate to top side. That's exactly what they do. Different champion here in the vein, but they walk all the way from bot up the river, and then up the river again, and they're looking for this top side turret. But this time they're looking for it into a gangplank ultimate, and very good wave clear. And there's the ultimate. They actually look Missed. for the fight as well. Taunt underneath turret means that Orn's going to take a lot of damage. However, they're just going to be able to continue the push. Zach wasn't there, mm -hmm. and that means that the fight goes Legacy's Ooh, way. Flash nice out by Raid. Kidnap happens, but it's onto the two tanks. Cassiopeia ult misses. Decoy, nice use of the stopwatch there. And this fight looks like it's all Legacy. And right now, Paprai still has not teleported. We'll does get in commit? on Sway. We'll commit to the fight as well. And Legacy in a 5v3 will continue to go forward. Raid Ooh. gets chunked out. Double stopwatch used at the same time. Q will be the shutdown. Sybil on top of Paparize right now. We'll be able to pick up the kill. Shock will get series oh. as well. And at the same time, you can see Low will fall down. Oh, Claire Malific picks up a kill. Malefic Visions oh. jumps, but that will be the barrier to save his life. Such a close fight there. You'd think Paparose was only teleporting to the Zac Blobs to keep him alive there, but Swaith goes back in. They did have all their carries alive. Shock and Low were alive. We do see series miss another Orn. Ulti coming out of here, tilting, just effectively buying time. In between four players right here, Claire, you see on the right-hand side of your screen, trying to make his way in, but here we see Swade actually commit to the fight. Raid, nice little flash out of that uh, ultimate from the Zac there, gets himself out of danger. We see the stopwatches coming out from a few members here, but now you look at this, the Gangplank ulti coming through, all they have alive when Swade goes down here is three members that do damage. So you see, Paprise looked for a kill here, but can't quite find it because of that stopwatch. Series is just buying time. He's effectively 1v2. And look, he will go down, but... He's just buying time for his carries to do damage here. And you see that ulti just comes up for Claire, luckily. And he picks up a <laughs> picks up a kill on the end of that just by pressing E. Yeah, and I mean, to be fair, Tectonic, relatively even in that, I think it was a one, uh, four for two, four for three, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, but at the same time, they're still up in gold mm -hmm. and they got kills onto their carries. I mean, Vayne now back in the game because of that team fight, but Tectonic are still up. 3,000 gold off the back end of it. And I mean, compare that to last game, right? In this game, you can say again, they do want to scale up. They do have the Gangplank, they have the Ezreal, the Cassio, but they were at a gold deficit the entire game. Legacy had control the entire game and were setting up these plays. 
not the quickest comparatively to some other OPL teams, but they were setting them up and taking advantages. But this game, Tectonic, are in that similar situation, but Legacy don't have as much control. They do have the goal lead right now for the first time. Yeah, exactly right. And you see that's an expiration. Herald used, so they're just going to try and extort Herald down the mid lane. Potentially look to bait a team fight or something like that around it, while Paprise just pushes bottom lane. Uh -huh. About a 20 CS lead on the Gangplank right now. Adaptive Helm coming out of series, so... They've done a good job of escorting this. It's actually yeah. going to at least get a charge. We'll get one. They do have a wave collapsing, but... It's a big charge. It is. The tower goes fairly low. Bot side of the map right now. Series just uh, jostling for the wave. Pat Price is trying to push it in right now. Had the brittle proc on his head, so... so took a flamethrower to the face. How do they translate this? Translation of gold leads into mid-late game is something that seems to be pretty difficult at the moment. What is the... Is it a Baron because of Cassiopeia? What do you think that they're looking for here, Tech I mean, I think the Baron is the big thing. They do have the Cassio that will do that very quickly, but they need to get Paprise out of that side lane initially to get them some control. They don't have the control on the side of the map with the four. They have the control with the one, Gangplank into Orm. So if they bring him with them, they don't want to opt into a 5v5 fight right now, but bring them topside, get the vision control, push the waves in, and then once you have that vision, once you have that control at top side of the map, just chuck him bot. His TP's up in about a minute here. Paprise will push in that bot side against Ceres. And then you have these windows of time where you have access to Baron. You can pull the trigger on a play. You can TP early. You can get a flank ward in there behind them. But Paprise is just constantly staying in the bot side. So his pressure, unless it gets him a turret, doesn't mean anything. It has been largely ineffective so far, at least. It's kind of why... Originally, I thought we were going to see Gangplank as primarily a mid laner because his yep. teleport isn't as impactful. You want him there to set up kegs before the fight. Yep. Not teleporting in with zero kegs. Mm -hmm. He's not like a Maokai, a Malphite, even an Orn that jumps yep. in and has immediate impact. Um, and I mean, I think what you're trying to say also is the fact that if you have a teleport in the mid lane, it's an extra teleport, right? Yep. You already have someone in the side lane. You have a Maokai to TP in and go and then you get an extra one, potentially a numbers advantage over your opponent. Paprise might be stuck. Yeah, definitely Gen might be Ulti. caught out. Shen Ultimate is going to be there, gets the into the wall. That's a very nice taunt, plus dodge field. Onto a sick Miasma. Oh. Uh, Orn ult does come across, but the damage might be done, and this might be the first dragon. Lo and behold, it's an Infernal that will get picked up for te Tectonic. And I'm really surprised about the reservation from Shock there. There was four members standing on his Miasma. I'm actually very surprised he didn't flash over that wall, commit to the engage with that ulti, but he just uses it. Sitting behind the safety of the wall there, does not commit too hard. They would have had a lot of uh, lot of AOE coming through there. They did land the Shen Taunt, Miasma, Gangplank. As they are TPing to the Baron, actually, Ceres pulls the trigger on that one. Yeah, and Gangplank's this is actually a very decisive Baron. You can see that they know they're doing it, however, so potentially just looking for a team fight. Low gets tagged up there, but that's just a waste of teleport. They're going to go back to it. However, you can see this Gangplank, who is so fed at the moment, streaming back in. Mm -hmm. And good, patient play out of Tectonic means that this will be for naught. And I think, yeah, they've used up their window. They didn't pull the trigger. They were looking for the Nethergrass from that Malzahar, looking for the Cataclysm. Obviously, did not have Call of the Ram God from Series there, so they don't find This the is engaged. a hard reset. I honestly think so Tectonic could have Baron. done Baron. There's no vision there for Legacy. Braum, Decoy potentially realizing that right now, walking down the river, but no, actually just basing. They're going to get a free mid tower, but could have they got more? Yeah, I mean, that is a high percentage play. They just say, okay, we can get mid, and uh, that's an ultimate out of series, which is a big cooldown mm -hmm. at this stage of the game. Not going to do too much there. Knocks them up, and they do I mean, lose the turret the anyway. The AD carry and support weren't even there. That's not like it could have worked. That was like it was never going to work. I mean, I think he wasn't trying to engage as much as he was just trying to keep them off the turret, but too little, too late, I think. So the interesting thing is, for me, Tectonic forced Legacy into that hard reset, and then they get the mid turret, but they didn't get any Baron control right now. They, this ward, there is one in the pit, but it's probably, not probably, it should be cleared out by Legacy. If they don't, I think that is a misplay by them. Sibyl sitting on two pinks, Decoy sitting on three, and something... A lot of solo queue players don't realize on red side, I think Legacy honestly have done this wrong. You sweep the pit and then you pink the river. Yeah. Because on red side, obviously, they're coming from the left. They can't just chuck a wall, a ward rather, over the wall. So if you pink outside of the pit after sweeping it, you know there's no wards in there and then anything they throw into the river, you will be able to clear. Yeah, Sway has to leap away there. So they are getting some reasonable control over this area. See how much that extends as Call of the Ram God is back up and available. 
see Shock trying to get some damage down. That's onto the tanky member, however. And Sirius just doesn't take any damage at the mm. moment. Yeah, and it'd be interesting to see what a fight in a choke point looks like for these two teams. You have the AoE from Gangplank, from Zac, from Cassiopeia. Then the other side, you have so much AoE CC. Braum, on. Oh, Jab into the wall nice. here. And that's going to be a suppression. That's going to be Zac falling down to Bloblets. We'll see whether they use their teleport they do. to try and keep him alive. Call the Ram God out, but no one can get in there oh. to try and help it. And Papri is now in big trouble looking to fall down. Stun is up. Flare, Flare flashes over the wall. Ultimate burn from Sybil as well. And he just can't get enough damage done. Papri will fall down. That is a two for nothing right now. And Tectonic cannot get access to this Baron. And time and time again, they have to use Paparize's TP to try and save Sway, but he goes down and Paparize actually commits. He lands in between five legacy members, flashes over the wall, but dies anyway, but the Baron is still on. Yeah, they're still looking for the fight. You see that Sybil goes back in there. There is no smite available right now for Tectonic, so they're looking for the kills. The poke damage. And the poke damage is starting to stack up. Members very low. Shock still with summoner spells up, does not want to commit. And you can see Decoy now will fall down very low. That is the oh. second time Malzaha ulti is up and available. And Shock has to Sibyl. flash away. Sybil goes very low. 1,500 damage. Ray flashes away oh. as well. But in the end, that will be three kills. A Baron buff picked up. And absolutely nothing Tectonic can get back in response. They're Shock looking. now getting engaged on. It's Sybil misses. Ending. It is never ending. They're just going to continue to kite back and forth. Swain. Swain is back here. Call of the Ram God Swain. again is up and available. He bangs them together. Series may fall down here, although he is so incredibly Decoy tanky. Based. And they can't get anything. <laughs> Series is still flashing away. Swain will get the slow from the rubber hands. But unless they can get anyone else here, he just doesn't have the damage to be able to kill him. Surely that will be... The oh, oh, is it? No, no. he's going to whack him into yeah, the light. Yeah, he, he's gone. He's going to go down, but... Is he? Oh, oh, the shield, no. Oh, oh eventually. Series lives for so long, but... He deserved to live. Zero mana. Absolutely zero mana on the on. But that fight there, Legacy, the carries could not get access to the Baron as uh, Rage is going to pick up a cheeky, cheeky little 1v1. That's why people like Vayne into Ezreal. Catch him in the sideline. Yep. Just chase him chase down. Him down forever. Absolutely. But uh, as I was saying, yeah, tilting low and shock. 3v5 in that Baron, but Legacy just couldn't do damage. Raid and Claire were out of the pit, stuck there by the Miasma. They couldn't get them in to actually do the damage. Because Legacy, five members, no smite available for Tectonic. You'd think if you were just listening to someone say that without seeing the situation, you're like, look, just burn the Baron. It's a 2k. Yep. But they didn't have enough damage there. And Tectonic do well to stave them off for so long. But unfortunately for them, the gold lead is shrinking here down to 300 gold, and Legacy find themselves with a Baron. Yeah, it certainly is. And all of a sudden, this Melzaha ultimate, which I thought would not be very effective, is actually massive. 4,000 gold lead in the top lane, but at the same time, 3,000 gold lead in the yeah, bottom lane. Raid is huge. Absolutely huge at this game. And he has those three items already. Got himself the uh, QSS as well for extra safety. See, Low trying to contest this red buff. Decoy and Sybil come in. Dragon is about to be alive and spawn. 28 seconds left on that one. And this feels like Legacy have finally got the grasp on the game that they want. Now they can start pressing forward. And you think they have all the tools available. Claire's flash is coming up so soon. They have that nether grasp to look for the picks. They have the cataclysm. Call of the Ram got as well. You've seen it time and time again. Series has missed more than half of his ulti this game. Some due to error, but some due to CC, but it doesn't even matter. They just have so many tools. Here's another. Yeah, ultimate burnt out of two members, but Paparai's just W'd out of that one. They might be able to get themselves one turret here. Yeah, that's a big commit. That is a massive commit. But do they have time? Paparai's has to go heal, so even though they don't take him down, there is a 4v5 window right now. Can they get the turret? That's the big one. Gameplank ultimate is up and available. Tilting has taught. They can look to fight there here. They is. drop the ultimate. Zach. In goes Zach. And that is huge. Picks two people up, brings them back into the team Cassio. comp. And Cassiopeia is going berserk on the back end of this team fight. Double kill picked up for Shock. And now they will continue the chase. This is a 5v3 oh. in the opposite direction. And you can see that they just cannot get the members they want. Successful disengage out of Legacy. That could have been so much worse. And the silence onto Tilting at the end of that stops the Flash Taunt coming out. Could have been so much worse for Legacy, as you said. But that's the turnaround for Tectonic. That's the one fight. They hold their bottom in here. They pull the trigger, 4v5, yes, but they hold onto the turret with that ulti. Zach gets in the back line. And that is what happens when you don't have the nether grass for the Zach. He's just mm -hmm. able to slingshot in. They burnt two of their engaged ulties. You see, Claire would have liked to just be ulti the Zach on the engage, stopping from getting into the back line, but they don't have it. They don't have the ram. And here we see in a few seconds, watch this silence onto tilting right here, looking for the flash. Silence there. 
as he goes forward, so can't actually commit onto Raid, who'd already used the QSS. That would have been another two kills, potentially, for Tectonic, but unfortunately, they don't pick it up. But they do have the gold lead again, 1.5k, they've got themselves an Infernal Drake, and the map has reset. Yeah, exactly right. The reset is the big deal there. Legacy would have been looking to push in with the Baron buff, would have been looking to close out this game. In the replay, they did manage to pick themselves up another dragon. However, it was an air drake, maybe a mountain drake. One of them. It's a mountain drake. Yep. Uh, and honestly, that's not the play that Legacy were looking for. Was air. Was it? Okay, sorry guys. I thought it went from inwards outwards. Why does it go left to right? What is it? I don't know. Well, whatever. It Who cares? It doesn't matter anyway. It doesn't. Just I'm just taking the lot. Uh, small Ooh. victories is raid. Bottom lane. Paprise 1v1. In comes Tilting. 1v3. In comes the Zac. Looks for the slap. And because he had, they actually ulted the wrong person there. That's going to be an ult onto the Shen. And now Claire is in some big trouble. Has to flash away. Paprise will fall down. That's a two for one trade. In comes Shock on the Cassiopeia. Looking to kite back. Looking to continue the damage output. Get Sybil with that ultimate. You can see the Zac just will not die. Will go down into Blobblitz finally. And the two damage threat from this. Tectonic are still up and available. Zac will be up again. Actually decides to not continue the chase. Bit of miscommunication there, honestly. Because oh. low, he wants in. Shock, he wants to continually go forward. If Swayth had a jumped in, good slow. Very nice oh, Miasma flashing turn. forward. Turn is there. And Swayth overshoots that one. You can see Shock though, he just cannot die. The tanks are the only people on him. One more time they go forward. Sybil will be able to pick up the oh. kill. Traps him in the arena. Shock will go down. And that is a four for one trade. Right there for Tectonic. And disappointingly for Tectonic, they were chasing for so long. They do have the slows out of the Ezreal, but ooh, that's potentially going to get caught again. out again. That's going to hit. Braun passive, where is it? Jarvan EQ lands. And all of them, they just overchase. They go down. They didn't have the front line. Zach was in Bloblets getting revived, so they could not do the damage to the members they wanted there. Legacy still looking for this bot lane, still have the uh, ultimate coming up from Claire. Yeah, Nethergrass is back it. up and available. No, he used it. It's just back up. Call yeah. the Ram God, also used. Back up and available. These fights are going for so long that we're getting multiple ultimates mm -hmm. out of Legacy's lineup. And Raid's just a one-man army right there. At the start of that engage, he was sitting there 1v3. Claire coming in from the bot side, but not quite yet. And I mentioned in champs, like in terms of Zach's engage, once you land, or once you commit to the E, we saw Ray just stealth away, stealth somewhere else. The Shentor comes through, but does not land. And that was a big deal for him. Lived for long enough for the rest of Legacy to collapse, and they do pick up the fight. But and if them, we see it again, I actually think e Ray should be applauded even further, because mm -hmm. I think he cleansed the initial rubber hands. And you saw Swave actually flash, hit the uh, Krug camp so to try and bring him back. Mm -hmm. But he'd already QSS'd it, so I'm going to call it. Good mechanics there from Raid. Mm -hmm. Wins him the team fight. Yep, popping off. 7-2-5 right now. Approaching the Flame Horizon. About 80 CS, 90 CS over his opponent right now. Have to talk about Horns. Great passive right now. We're getting to the super late game. You mm -hmm. only have six item slots. Not if you're an Orn team. <laughs> Start six and a half. upgrading to the Mortal. No, what is it? Molten Edge instead of the Infinity Edge? You see the upgraded locket. I don't know what that's called. I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea what all of items are called. Yeah, so just a better locket there. Better locket, better death cap, mm -hmm. better zonias or something. It's just better everything. Of course, you can only buy one of them. Yep. But that is enough sometimes when you get to six items, when these gold leads, not to mention there uh, is not really much of a gold lead right now, but the later the game goes, the less it means, and these items come up trumps. And all of a sudden, Gangplank needs more gold. And that is so strange to say, but he's gone the zero crit build. Mm -hmm. And I would argue this late in the game, you need 100% crit. Yep. Probably looking to sell a few items here. But he has to sell all of them, because he's bought no crit. We see the two-man Baron going on right now. Tilty so will it. spot it out. And you see, because it is AD carry and support, they do have to peel off. And do they look for the engage? Legacy done a good job with the waves right now. Bot side is pushing in. Mid lane is already on the inhib. Paprise will go and clean that one up very quickly, but this is a 4v5 around the Baron temporarily. Raid looking. Yeah, it certainly is. That Miasma does stop a lot of the aggression. Cassiopeia is great in Baron fights just for that reason. And you can see that Claire potentially looking for Paprise. Paprise will just clean out the wave and jet off at a million miles per hour. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Is Legacy just tending to their waves once again? Tectonic are looking. Yeah, they certainly are. Shock actually goes over the wall with a blast code. And now he's in the middle of the team. They flash forward. Two ultimates burnt for him. But you can see right now, massive shield coming out from Tilting. Front to back team fight. Raid is going nuts. Does get taunted up. And unfortunately for Paprise, he's had no impact in this team fight so oh. far. 
does miss that keg. Now we'll just have to run away. Gets flashed on. And this looks like Tectonic just cannot do anything at the moment. Raid's too big. Raid is absolutely huge in these fights, and nobody was touching in there. Tectonic, the carries are stuck in that ramp towards Blue Buff and could not find an avenue into the fight. Sway did get onto Claire, but Raid was just free hitting the entire time, and that's going to be the Baron once again going over to Legacy. Yeah, exactly right. One more Baron, and time and time again, this Vayne is just dancing around on the edges of the team fight. That might be a Baron into an Elder Drake as well. Five seconds. It certainly is. We'll Take a see look at the fight. this once again. Swayth goes on to Claire, but it just does not mean much. The tank's in the middle so big. And just look at Raid at the top of the fight. He's just doing so much damage. Cleanses out of the taunt there. Low and Shock on the left-hand side of the screen at this point are doing nothing. They're not getting the damage down. They can't get into the fight because they're stuck in that choke point. And then Pap Rise, he's just dead. He's got four members, five members of Legacy around him. Gets a barrel off, but not going to be enough as Legacy. That's a freebie. Yeah, exactly right. They put in the hard work. They make sure that they grab themselves the team fight win. They grab the Baron reset into Elder Drake. Now for the next few minutes, Tectonic will be on the back foot. But in saying that, with Gangplank Ultimate as well as Flash up and available for Shock and the wave clear that is coming out of Paparize, I think this is still a tool, not if you miss the barrels, but it should still be a difficult... Mm -hmm. It will be a tall order for Tectonic to hold this one. Legacy just want to push in all their waves. I'm surprised they didn't do this earlier. They went straight up mid and decided, nope, don't want to dive onto the Cassio, onto the Shen. This is the first game that actually looks like Oceania is paying on the same patch as the rest of the world. Because I honestly don't know if they can break the base. I think they need all three waves. They I need all three waves. They haven't got it. Top wave is still pushing in to Legacy's base. Mm -hmm. They don't have something like a Maokai to get under the turret and tank it up. This turret being low might be the saving grace right now. Yep. They uh, don't opt in for the free inner in the top side. One order coming out of raid does absolutely nothing, but there we go. Tectonic just give them free passage into the base here. So Legacy probably not going to be fought for this one here. Tectonic will give it up eventually, but I'm surprised right now they're not clearing. Ooh, looks for a chunk there inside of Pat Rise, but pops it in the face instead. And Sterax proc. That's a big deal. That's and a all big of a deal. sudden, they've really left the barn door open because Legacy go down mid lane, get half the HP on that turret. And the setup from Tectonic just is not good enough right now. Low steps forward, chunked out by Raid. And this is becoming a tense hold. And if they're going to fight for it, they need to fight now. They need to fight before they get poked out too much. This will eventually go Legacy's way if they just keep getting these orders onto the turrets. Wave after wave, they have the Baron and the other onto low here. Sybil's looking. Yeah, exactly right. Gets taunted up. Front to back team fight. That's the first time they've really got good damage down onto a tank. You can see that Legacy right now are just calling for the double inhibitor. They get them, and top lane now will move in Legacy's favor. Fantastic breaking of the base. And Tectonic really, now we're going to struggle to defend. And we compare this to what Legacy did in the bot side before, where they burnt Malzahar ulti and the Orn to break the base there. And they lost for the fight. That was Tectonic's window, but now they just use Call of the Forge God. Only the one. Ceres uses the ulti to get them to back off slightly. Enough to give them enough time to hit that in here. They take that one down for free, effectively. His ulti's back up. He's sitting on 40% CDR right now. He's absolutely chilling. Three seconds here, and it's going to be available. So they have all their cooldowns all ready for this huge wave. Yeah, exactly right. So they escort the huge minion wave. Swave gets spotted out. Will not be able to go in. That's a good cake to clear it out. However, you can just see Sybil marching forward, mm -hmm. looking to zone. Claire's damage is monstrous at the moment. But Legacy, time and time again, Discipline play, yep. back away. Elder Dragon is out by now. They do not have that double buff just sitting on the Baron right now. That'll run out very shortly. I think it just did. Yep, go on. No empowered recall. So hard reset coming out. Mm -hmm. That is a six item game playing, no boots, but still no crit. Doesn't have enough gold just yet. Opts in for the GA instead of his boots, obviously. Gives him a bit more AD and a bit more safety. But I have to think, if he's falling down early in a team fight, they're going to lose it anyway. He's going to be doing a large bulk of their damage right now. He's got about a 4k, 5k gold lead onto Sirius right now, but it just looks like it doesn't matter. He's got 150 CS on him, but Sirius is just ulting for the pressure. It doesn't even matter if they land, because Tectonic just back away anyway, because they have to. They don't want to get chain CC'd by this, and then Legacy walk up, Raid hits the inhib, Rain hits the turret, and they get it for free. Yeah, and we talk about it all the time, but sometimes ease of execution is just king. And you can have a Gangplank that has so much damage, but if you just got very good hard CC, that can tie up the back line and Raid can hit the front line, which is all that's been happening in these fights, mm -hmm. does not really matter.
And I have to critique Legacy for this again. Once again, they're set up on the opposite side of the map. And the wave on the other side is not pushing in yet. It's so slow. They did it when they pushed bot side and top was so far away, but they did have that low turret already. So they got towards the end here, but they took it anyway. But now, with no Baron, with no Elder, that wave, the super creeps are pushing in now, but it's going to be another solid minute until that is actually threatening the Nexus. And mid lane, a lot easier to hold for Patrizer. He's just sitting there clearing the waves against Siri. Siri's not too much of a threat. Certainly is the case. One thing I will say is if you start at this far back, you get two super creeps. Yep, that so, is true. I mean, Gangplank will eat both of them, yep. so it doesn't really matter. As we see, Slingshot charged up here, he threatening he to does. go. He does go. And they use that him. ultimate to try and suppress him in. No stuck Douglas, no play going to go down. Blobblet already, and it looks like this is Legacy's fight. Really nice ultimate out of shock. Will stop the aggression going Ray's forward. Behind. Decoy goes down. Raid is in there, gets torn it up, and will oh. fall down. That is absolutely massive. Now Tectonic looking to continue the fight. And you can see Tilting just looking for the taunt. However, Spell Shield back up and available, and they're not able to get onto Claire. Good keg goes out. Pops it onto Sybil. He is very low. Will dodge out on that silence, and that's so nicely played Al's from Claire. coming up. You can see that he's just playing it nice and slow. Will continue to look to push out, he's and that Paparaz will fall. Shock will have the Malefic Visions on him. There's already Super Creeps on the Nexus turrets. The slow play from Legacy will rank supreme. They will pick up the 2-0, but Game 2 was a little bit more difficult than Game 1. And Tectonic, unfortunately, will go down series with the BM teleport there, straight to a minion. They had to fight there. They had to try and hold. There was that gold deficit. They did have two inhibs down already. The Nexus was being knocked on by those creeps. The super creeps on the bot side, you did mention two waves of them coming through. They tried to get into the fight and then it looked risky. Ray died in the back end of that one. He got caught on a miasma, could not tumble away, then gets hit by the taunt. Does fall down, but Claire, the CD on that ultimate anyway. That was, that was coming up. He could have just flashed old Viva Cassio at the back end of that fight. He did. Got QSS yep. off. Yeah. Uh, but he, the slow play out of Claire yep. was really nice. The 100%. fact that he wasn't panicking, Raid kind of dove the back line. Claire was like, nah, I can shred through the tanks. Mm -hmm. Play it front to back. I've got very low cooldown on my spells. Uh, but Tectonic, 33 minute loss against Order. Mm -hmm. 41 and a half minute loss against Legacy. They are putting up quite a fight at the moment. I do hate I do hate to say, you know, it's a good thing when you battle for your losses, yep. but for a young team to get experience, I actually think in this instance, two weeks into the se uh, season, it actually is. I think so as well. I think inarguably, they have been 0-2 two, two weeks in a row, but that game was their best game, 100%. Yep. I think uh, their bot lane looked fine. Their top side paparized. They Johnny Cyclone in the interview mentioned they were picking Greedy, so they first picked Gangplank, and honestly, it was true. They got him through that early phase. It was completely fine against series as all up at the top side, and and yeah, did look competitive for a lot of that. Did have a gold lead, and I think that's probably the first gold lead they've had in their first four games of the season. Unfortunately, they couldn't pull out the win there, and Legacy do pick it up, but looked all right. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, you put them in that situation, I think it becomes a little bit more of a 50-50 game plan, and Legacy got a couple of picks in a Baron, so we're able to pick that one up. But do want to chat about Legacy quickly. Uh, Claire, their new captain, two very solid games, mm -hmm. two very impressive games on different champions. Uh, Sybil looking promising and good today. Yep. Uh, I think a lot of upside for this team. Yeah, 100% agree. And they're also working together uh, much better than I think Legacy have in the past. I think you do see the remnants of that old Legacy roster. I mentioned the bot to mid to top. Those plays still do exist for this roster. But yep. early game one, you see the invades. They put so much pressure uh, onto Shock in the mid lane on that Vega uh, with Sybil being around there, with Decoy constantly floating. Uh, and they were just pressuring that mid lane really heavily. And then you see Claire bounce it back down. Game two, same sort of thing. Yeah, exactly right. And I mean, this is a team that, I mean, say what you will, long games, like getting first blooded against Sin. Mm -hmm. End of the day, they're 2-0 and 2-0. <laughs> yeah, They'll they're be chilling. sitting at top of the table. Mm -hmm. And unlike Order, they have a superstar top laner to come back into their lineup yep. in Mimic. So, you know, arguably haven't seen the best of Legacy yet. And that's the biggest thing. We've now finished week two, right? All, that, all of these competitive rulings we've been talking about, all these subs... Do not matter anymore. We do have the excitement of seeing Mimic potentially next week coming in. The uh, big superstar from Korea, you mentioned. I'm keen. I'm keen. You, this game looked good for Legacy. It looked Legacy style. Uh, it was long, but I think you can only assume that they get much better with this new player coming through. Yeah, exactly right. So we'll see what they look like next week with all five players. However, we are going to throw it alongside to Laura and Pabu, who's standing alongside with a member of Legacy. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. Babu and I are back one more time, and we're joined by Raid from Legacy. It was a 2-0 win, but it was a bit scrappy, especially in that second game. A win's a win, though. How was the team feeling? Yeah, um, it was a pretty bad game. I think I played <laughs> really poorly. We probably could have won in maybe like 30 minutes if I didn't make mistakes. 
Um, Lucho said to me, like, because we always wanted to, like, try Vayne. We've been playing it all week and we thought it was a good game. Um, I tunneled too much in picking it because I think it's really bad in Casio because it's, like, almost impossible to team fight in chokes, like, around Baron. Like, she just chucks her W down and you can't tumble forward or chase them down. But, um, yeah, I should have just... Uh, not gone for kills <laughs> and hit towers and we probably would have won a lot quicker. <laughs> uh, what were the comms like in those crazy team fights? There was quite a few that were, were drawn out and yeah, what was going on. Yeah, um, well, it was a bit chaotic actually. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, every, we're just trying to find Zach. Like that's, that whole goal was just like, because if, if we know where Zach is, like we just can't lose any fights. So we were just trying to play towards like where Zach's not. And uh, yeah, it was, it was all right. All right. So I noticed uh, you have little Deco on your team, all right? Yeah. He's, he's new to the scene, but you picked a non-Shen champion for him. I've seen <laughs> he's, he's a bit of a spammer of that <laughs> Shen champion. So what, what was the logic behind not picking the Shen? Um, well, in Korea, I pretty much played like mostly Shen, but I think he's a lot better on other champions than Shen. Like I really like his Brom. Uh, he's, he's had to play Brom pretty much every <laughs> game so far. <laughs> he's not too happy about that, but yeah, you, you know, he's, I really like Daniel. I think he's a really good player. You two used to be on a team together. Yeah. Do you miss being on a team with Pabu? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he never lived in the house. So, <laughs> so yeah. Boys. I don't know. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I like Pabu. He's a good friend. That's good. I'm sure he's happy to hear that. And he's in a good place now. He's doing really well in AV. So. Oh, so are you on Legacy. Hell yeah. It's only, two, it's only two weeks, so we'll, we'll see what happens. We're yeah. moving up in this world. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you had one yeah. last question so, uh, to ask. On your former team, Abyss, now known as Bombers, their ADC replacement, the, the import, yeah. also has a similar hairstyle. He's a fellow <laughs> broccoli head. Are you excited to play against him in your show, show off against <laughs> your old team? We don't verse them until the last week, so it's a, it's a quite it's a while away. Um, he's lo he looks pretty good, you know. Uh, if we've only seen two games. Is it two games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So he look he looks all right. We'll, we'll see how he goes in the next weeks. So, um, yeah, uh, should be a pretty good. Quickly. Matchup. You two are going against each other next week, Avant versus Legacy. Have mm. you got any thoughts on that? Um, I don't want to say too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's Mimic's first we'll week. See. It's been, uh, we've been screaming with like Mimic and Evan on and off like so much. It's, re it's really like, you know, it's pretty annoying, like always swapping. But Mimic's really, really good. And like not only is he good individually, when we play with Mimic, mm. we are like, you know, playing extremely well in scrims, you know. So hopefully um, we can keep that up and should beat AV. We'll have Ooh. to <laughs> see and find out about that. Congratulations, though, thank on you. today's win. And thank you so much, Pabu, for joining us on The Hangout. It's been a lot of fun. But to close out today's games, we're going to hand it back over to Jake and Bryce. Uh, thanks so much, Laura. Good to hear from Raid, a player that has been around for a while now. You said uh -huh. he didn't play all that well in the second game. I think he's a little bit hard on himself. Looked <laughs> yeah, okay to me. Strongly disagree. I mean, <laughs> he had a bunch of kills and uh, was popping off in those team fights. But, I mean, we mentioned it and then he mentioned it as well about the vein into the Cassio. was a bit of a struggle at the end of that game. Looked a bit shaky, but ended up with a very good scoreline. I reckon if we took a look at the damage charts, he'd be top of the tables there. Yeah, he certainly would be up as we bring up the day's results onto your screen. It was, of course, Dials picking up the 2-0 over Sin, and Legacy were able to pick up a hard 4 2 victory over Tectonic, which means that on Saturday we had all red side victories, on Sunday all blue side start mm -hmm. victories. I mean, something strange is going on here as we have a look at the ladder. Legacy will be on top now, six points. Order will join them with another six points. Dival's just behind on five. And unfortunately, for a couple of teams down the bottom, it's going to be Bombers, Sin, and Tectonic, all oh. yet without a singular point. Feels bad. Does anything surprise you about that? I mean, Legacy at the top, I think. Uh, absolutely. I think coming into this split 2018, you look at their roster, just complete change up uh, overall. I mean, Order coming in over Regicide based on the talent in that roster, you expect them to be good, but it's very interesting seeing a seventh place team sitting at the top up there and then yeah Direwolves is not at the top of the ladder they did have that 2-1 victory so couldn't get the 2-0 clean start to the season they wanted yeah maybe not the top three that people would expect to see as we bring up mm -hmm. next week's schedule on Saturday at 2pm Australian Eastern Standard Daylight Savings Time that's not standard time at all it's going to be Chiefs versus Tectonic before order take on Sin Gaming then on Sunday it will be Avant Gaming versus Legacy which has to be the match of the round before mm -hmm. Die Wolves take on the O2 Bombers, but finally with Sleeping, Looch, and Tiger yeah. all on the same team. That is going to be an absolutely amazing matchup, Bryce. I do it to you every time. Mm -hmm. Which game are you looking forward to I see? I think 
the preview we just saw, AV Legacy, they were very reserved on the couch, and they did uh, have a wholesome little hug as Raid left the room in the yep. broadcast room here, but I think that'll be the most interesting one. Right. I think they are the most evenly matched out of the two, but I am excited, as you said, for the Bombers to see their new players. They've had three subs for the past two weeks, and that's a big deal. Yeah, it certainly is. However, guys, that is all the League of Legends action we have for you this weekend. On behalf of myself, Bryce, all the guys at the Analyst hang Hangouts, all the pr entire production crew, that's all we have for you. So I'm going to go to Hungry Jacks and get myself a Whopper Junior meal. Catch ya! <laughs> we see a big engage mid lane, and they're actually going to use three ultimates right now, but the turnaround is oh. there. And it looked like for some reason the ramp didn't go off because Claire going to be kidnapped, taken back into the team. We'll have to use heal. <laughs> Dodge zone comes down, ram comes out, double knock up, bouncy castle accomplished. That's a nice three man taunt, but he's still going to die. And a very clean execution of the turret guard. The ball, the ramp got out, but no one can get in there oh. to try and help it. And Papra is now in big trouble looking to fall down. Stun is up left. Claire flashes over the wall. Ultimate burn from Sybil as well. And he just can't get enough damage done. Papra Prize will fall down. That is a two for nothing right now. Zach. In goes Zach, and that is huge. Picks two people up, brings them back into the team Cassio. comp, and Cassiopeia is going berserk on the back end of this team fight. Double kill picked up for Shock. One in comes Tilting. In comes the Zach. Looks for the slap, and because he had, they actually ulted the wrong person there. That's going to be an ult onto the Shen. And now Claire is in some big trouble. Has to flash away. Paprise will fall down. That's a two for one trade. And there's already. Super creeps on the Nexus turrets. The slow play from Legacy will rank supreme. They will pick up the 2-0, but game two was a little bit more difficult than game one.